thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, uh, very happy to be here, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to present to you the activities of our office. Uh, in the next 10 minutes, I, was, I will try to be, stick to the time limit, uh, talk about uh, two topics that already were mentioned today in the introduction, disaster risk reduction, uh, water, uh, and uh, climate change, all interlinked. Uh, touch upon a few activities we undertake in the area of environment and energy, sustainable energy, and then uh, turn to economic activities and focus sure. mainly on good governance. Uh, a longer version of the speech will be circulated, which uh, includes more topics like transport, our cooperation with the Border Management Staff College uh, or the Academy in Bishkek, uh, gender aspects of our work, and so on. But uh, as I have to be brief, I want to start with the uh, forum topic. The Swiss Chairmanship 2014 gave us a very clear focus for this year's uh, EEF, uh, responding to environmental challenges with a view to promoting cooperation and security in the OEC area. So the uh, topics discussed were um, human, social, economic impacts of natural disasters uh, and assessment of how preparedness and prevention can reduce these costs and these losses. Uh, at the second meeting in Montreux in May, uh, we combined uh, in-depth discussions on disaster risk reduction, including at local level, and cross-dimensional impacts of disasters. Uh, it was combined with the hands-on experience uh, shown by Switzerland on con with, by concrete case studies and uh, trips to the field. The concluding meeting in Prague underlined the added value of the organization in the context of global processes related to disaster risk reduction. As uh, Madam Chair mentioned, the disaster risk reduction agenda, Hugo Framework uh, for Action 2, Develop sustainable development uh, agenda, and of course, the international climate ne negotiations. Uh, one session of this meeting was also specifically devoted to assessing the lessons learned uh, uh, in the wake of the devastating floods in southeastern Europe in May. Uh, before I move to the topic of water, I would like to mention a few examples of our work to help address uh, risks of disasters. One of them is a project that we have been implementing in the last five years already. And it is uh, uh, g the strengthening of national and regional capacities in wildfire management in the South Caucasus. Another example is enhancing flood management capacities in the Dnester River Basin, which is shared by Moldova and Ukraine. We are also taking some first steps in the field of community-based disaster risk reduction through the public environmental information centers, the AHO centers, which we as OSC have been supporting and uh, uh, over a decade now and supporting the strengthening of these centers since 2002. Uh, with this, I would like to turn to the area of water. We have been promoting sustainable water management and transboundary water cooperation at an increasing pace this year, as it is one of the priorities of the Swiss and uh, next year's Serbian Chairmanship, and therefore the topic will continue to be one of our priorities. In July, we organized the Security Days event uh, on enhancing security through water diplomacy and looked at the role of the OEC. The keynote address was delivered by His Royal Highness Prince El Hassan bin Talal of Jordan. As you might know, he was until uh, recently the chairman of the UN Secretary General's Advisory Board on Water and Sanitation and is currently the chair of the High Level Forum for the Blue Peace Middle East Plan. The discussions at the Security Day confirmed the linkages between water and security that water can be a potential source of tensions and conflict, but also a tool for confidence building and cooperation. Uh, the event, event provided a good springboard for us, as I mentioned, for next year's uh, uh, discussions. Uh, the forum topic for next year, the Serbian chairmanship uh, decided on, is water governance in the OEC area and increasing security and stability through cooperation. Of course, we are also continuing our work in the, in the partnership of ENFSEC, the Environment and Security Initiative, where we work together with UNDP, uh, UNECE, UNEP, uh, Regional Environmental Center, and NATO as associate partner. Um, we will continue our bilateral and regional cooperation among countries, uh, support to this uh, cooperation, and uh, to give you examples where we already are engaged in the Dnester River Basin between Ukraine and Moldova, eight years of uh, NFSEC and OSC supported uh, uh, negotiations led to the conclusion of a bilateral agreement between the two countries in uh, already December 2012. Uh, ratification happened already in Moldova. We are 
waiting for the rat uh, ratification in Ukraine. And uh, the second example is the Kura River between Azerbaijan and Georgia. Uh, we supported negotiations, a few rounds of negotiations, and the agreement is uh, more or less uh, ready. There are some final touches that are being made, and we hope it will be signed soon. A few words about climate change and uh, a topic that was extensively, extensively covered also during the forum discussions as it's linked to the disaster, to disaster topic, and you were also mentioning it, Madam Chair, the PACO declaration by the Parliamentary Assembly uh, was on this topic. Uh, we started to address the linkages between climate change and security uh, more intensely after the 2007 Madrid uh, Ministerial Declaration on Environment and Security. A uh, conference on the topic followed in Bucharest in 2009. Then from in the past three years, we organized sub-regional workshops in Eastern Europe, the South Caucasus, Southeastern Europe and Central Asia to draw climate change scenarios and the climate change and security scenarios and to identify priority areas that uh, would be affected by climate change. And last year, we embarked on a, a big project. Uh, we joined forces with the European Commission Instrument for Stability uh, within the framework of MSEC, where the OSC is the partner and lead organization uh, to assess climate uh, impacts on security in Central Asia, the South Caucasus, and Eastern Europe. And uh, this will, project will include the identif identification of geographical areas that would be most affected. And also, we will start with developing a transboundary adaptation strategy for the Dniester River Basin. As I mentioned, this is a big project and it's ongoing and will stay with us for the next years. Um, I mentioned already the Aarhus Centers. Uh, among, among the wide range of uh, activities in the second dimension, we emphasize the promotion of uh, good governance and public participation, uh, keeping in mind that the role of an active and well-informed civil society act that acts as a partner of the government is crucial to reduce environment and security risks. So in this light, our office has since 2002 supported the establishment and strengthening of these centers. Uh, and uh, as of today, we are supporting 14 centers, uh, 56 centers in 14 countries. So it's quite a sizable network uh, by now. Uh, before I turn to the economic activities, a few words on our engagement regarding energy security and sustainability in the OEC region. Here, our work is based uh, mainly in, on the two decisions, ministerial council decisions that were taken in Kiev last year. The first decision on improving the environmental footprint of energy-related activities. The second one on the protection of energy networks from natural and man-made disasters. Again, a topic linked to uh, this year's forum. Activities on the implementation of the first decision took uh, mainly place in the field so far. Two examples. Uh, early this year, we organized together with the center in Ashgabat a seminar on renewable energy in the Murray State Energy Institute of Turkmenistan uh, with the goal of establishing a national center of excellence on renewable energy. And in Dujambe, uh, a regional conference on energy cooperation was co-organized by us together with the office in Tajikistan, the OSC office. And during this conference, it was proposed to establish an energy diplomacy center in Tajikistan. This is a proposal and it still needs uh, further elaboration. When it comes to the second decision, uh, our first activity this year was the organization of an expert workshop in Vienna in July on sharing best practices to protect electricity networks from natural disasters. And this workshop provided participants with insights on good practices, knowledge, and experience from different countries and stakeholders across the entire process of protecting electricity networks from natural disasters. And it was also a good starting point for our next activity, which is a compilation and publish, publication of a, of a handbook that will contain the proceedings of the workshop and some additional inputs from selected experts. Uh, with this, I would like to turn to my last topic, economic activities. Uh, as many of you know, the Dublin Declaration of 2012 uh, on strengthening good governance and combating corruption, money laundering, and the financing of terrorism uh, provides us with a comprehensive mandate to promote well-governed, transparent, and non-corrupt economies, and in turn, growth, stability, and security. Uh, our office has continued this year to provide assistance to participating states in implementing their commitments in these areas, in particular uh, those related to the UN Convention Against Corruption and the Financial Action Task Force recommendations. All our anti-corruption work we do together with the field presences. We organize capacity building seminars, 
and assist uh, host governments uh, to strengthen participation of civil society in combating corruption and decision-making processes, particularly uh, in activities related to prevention of corruption. Uh, in June, to give you an example, we supported uh, the organization of a regional expert seminar on the prevention of corruption and looked at the main trends and examples of uh, successful practice in Eastern Europe and uh, Central Asia. Uh, this event was uh, hosted by the Albanian authorities and uh, took place in the framework of the OECD, Anti-Corruption Network for Eastern Europe and Central Asia. We also supported um, field operations in, when they promote and uh, offer trainings based on the OSC Handbook on Data Collection in support of money laundering and terrorism financing national risk assessments. This is the full title of this handbook, but it's uh, available online, and uh, I guess it is a lot clearer when you read it. Uh, and uh, we also, together with the Office of the Special Representative and Coordinator for Combating Trafficking in Human Beings, and the TNT, uh, Strategic Police Matters uh, Unit of the OAC, uh, launched a research paper on leveraging anti-money laundering regimes to combat trafficking in human beings. As recent as last week in Tashkent, uh, the OSC, in partnership with the Financial Intelligence Unit of Uzbekistan and the Eurasian Group on Combating Money Laundering and Financing of Terrorism, EHG, is one of our partners in this field, organized a workshop on NRA, National Risk Assessment of Money Laundering and Terrorism financing, sign, financing for officials from 15 different ministries and agencies involved in the implementation of, uh, of standards. Uh, for anti-money laundering and countering the financing of terrorism in Uzbekistan. Uh, participants at this meeting were also introduced to the recently launched Russian version of the OSC Handbook on Data Collection in support of money laundering and terrorism financing and national risk assessment. And as I said, all our publications are available to you uh, and also online. And I would like to conclude uh, by mentioning that we are aware of the important role parliamentarians play in the economic environmental field. In terms of the legislative authority, of your legislative authority, uh, be it uh, national legislation, ratification of international uh, legislation, inability to create opportunities for civil society to take part in the development and review of national legislation, and also in bringing the security perspective to international global level discussions on thematic issues. So I would uh, like to thank you very much for your support in these uh, areas and uh, hope that we will have a good discussion. Thank you.